the characteristic that I believe that marks our race as love-reaching communities is faith. In Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Some translations say the author, the authoritative instructor, and the perfecter of our faith. It carries on to say, who for the joy, Jesus, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus, oh, he will always be number one. So faith, in this text, Jesus is described as our founder and our perfecter, the author of our faith. This faith is the word pistis. I've taught on it before. If you've been here for a while, I'm sure there's some YouTube evidence on pistis. But I wanna, want to mention to you, this word is not used as a substitute word for joining Christianity as a faith movement. It is not a substitute placeholder for the thing religion. It is not like you can't substitute this word faith. He is the author and perfect of our organization. Are you understanding what I'm saying? No, 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 no. This word pistis is persuasion to the point where it changes and alters who you are and what you stand for. It, it says a, a persuasion of moral conviction, of religious truth. Jesus is this. He's truth. He is the one that persuades. He's the one who changes. It is used as this notion that, that says, I'm convinced and I'm convicted fully and in all senses willing to become more persuaded of Jesus Christ as Messiah, Messiah, unable to ever be convinced to not trust Him and follow Him. Listen to what Hebrews 11 says. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. And you take this first step as a new Christian and you say, God, I don't know, but I'm trusting in the assurance of you being true to your word. You step into it. And all of a sudden, the evidence start coming as your life changes into the likeness of Christ. And it fulfills this wonderful passage. Things that weren't seen in you, kindness, all of a sudden is evident. But you have to enter the race. And that is a race of faith. The amazing transformation that comes once I accept God as my ultimate race designer and course planner, that faith marks our life, marks our race. And if you've accepted Jesus, maybe this morning you can just remind yourself that I am marked by the faith I have in Jesus Christ. Maybe close your eyes and just repeat it. I am marked by the faith I placed in Jesus Christ. Lord, accept our renewal this morning as we say you are everything to us. We don't even want to set a foot in this race unless it is based on our complete and utter faith in you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we often hear when we say, hey, we missed you on Sunday. Oh, no, I had to rest. Rest from what? Please take this as a gentle rebuke. But you come here and you sit. You know what? You come here, you praise God, you sing songs that we have rehearsed. He even criticizes sometimes. But... As you sing that, it lifts your spirit. It soothes your conscience. And you live, you leave feeling better because you stand. The second thing, you, do, you come and you listen to the word and it empowers, it, it convicts, it, it, it even makes you smile sometimes. You walk in this. You come here. And you have our good coffee. 
and you leave energized to the point where you can run again. And you want to take rest from that. What? You only have energy because he gave it to you. And we are not sapping the energy. This is the place where you get revived. This is the fellowship of believers. This is good for you. This is a pit stop that is worth prioritizing. Because you literally do nothing but participate. It's a good outing, I say. Tell friends. Tell yourself. I don't have to rest from church. Church is nourishment. But you know what happens? <laughs> I understand that the demand sometimes is, is heavy. Having said that. And sometimes the demand on our abilities is taxing. I get this. But can you imagine that, can you just remind yourself, you have a presence and a skill that is sometimes the precise instrument that the Creator God needs to love on His children. I cannot fill the space that He has designed for you. This is why we get burnt out, because we try and fill spaces that wasn't designed for us. The way you laugh, the way you engage with someone, the way your mind processes facts and information and spits out logic and wisdom, the way you know just how, what to say and how to say it, the way you hug a person that is sad or depressed or lonely, the, your amazing creativity in being able to feed many with little, your amazing crea creativity to conjure up a feast from what's in your fridge, to pay for someone that hasn't enough and to assess a situation and bring life. That is your superpower. And the reality, when you do this, you spend your energy, <laughs> but you get energized. You are satisfied. When you bring your abilities you have access to the eternal creative power of God's word. As you say, here's my ability, God, and I bring it to you. You step into that space where his creation power is fully on you and starts to become true. Matthew 25. Jesus says to his his disciples and people, then the king will say to those on the right, come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom. You know, he carries on and he says, because I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. <sighs> That's what you do when you bring your abilities in this faith race. Start to fulfill scripture that was spoken by the word of God. Jesus, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And he became flesh, and he was the light among us. And it's wonderful because he says, you will inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I just want to say, this kingdom, does Jesus ever say, in this kingdom, scorpions will sting you all the time. And um, in this kingdom, I will take all that you have and leave you with nothing. No, there's no scriptural evidence of this kingdom being an actual prison kingdom. It's a good kingdom where he'll give you energy when you step into using your abilities in this race for him. Some practical ways as I'm wrapping up faith is we have this thing. Every, anybody ever hear, oh my goodness, I'm dating myself. Bring your time, your talent, and your treasures to God. Have you ever heard that? Do we have so many new people that you've never heard that? It takes a practical thing to activate this faith. And sometimes it takes a little bit of sacrifice from us. You need to come with your time. And the practical thing how you do that is to say when you say, I don't have time this week, despite that statement, show up. Sacrifice your, 
your own importance in that and say, I will still show up. I'll show up for a life group. I will show up for a prayer meeting. I will show up on a Sunday. I will show up when somebody needs me. You know, people don't need you at convenient times. Has anybody ever found you at a convenient time when you were just getting into the car with the jumper cables and you thought, ah, point me in the right direction, God. Which way? Which way? Which way? Which way? Which way? I'm ready. I'm ready. No, they found you at half past 10 in the evening when it's freezing cold and they say, can you come and help me in my car? Never convenient. Show up. Bring your time. The second thing, treasure. Now, in this world where churches constantly vie for your money, God has told us to not do that, but still leave you with His principles. So, I hope you never have to hear a constant barrage on your wallet from the front. But this morning, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. The Bible shares three principal buckets for us to pour our finances into, our treasures. The first one is tithes, antiquated word. A percentage of your first fruit must be brought to your storehouse, what the Bible says. Ten percent, that's why it's called tithe. Um, a place that you give it to where you are cared for, you feel part of, you are served in, you are cared for, prayed for. And I know in this current economic climate, it's a massive demand. It's a massive act of faith. Because when you are willing to say, Father, you have convinced me that I need to give on a regular basis of my first fruit, you are actually making a faith statement to the world out there that says, this race that I know God has called me to, I have faith that I can do more with 90% of my fruit. And that statement of faith is greater than that statement of regret and doubt of having to give 10%. It's one of the buckets, tithes. Then there's another bucket that the Bible describes, offering. It's giving of finances towards a specific object, objective contribution. It sounds like this. We are taking up funds for a mission trip to India. There we go. Thank you. Sure. I didn't think of that example, but I thought maybe like we need new instruments, we need chairs, we need something, there's, there's some growth. We need another zip line to engage our community better with, you know. Um, I love this passage in the Bible in, in Chronicles and in Kings. The, the king reads the word of God again, and he discovers that they haven't done the festival of Passover. They haven't done Passover. And he gets everything ready. And you know, this king has already given his tithe. All his captains already given. They rock up with 35,000 sheep and 3,000 cattle. And they all have to get slaughtered. Okay, besides all of the mess, that is 35,000 sheep that he offers to God. And his wealthy captains of hundreds and thousands come and they bring. And they have enough to like sacrifice and for the entire nation to have a celebration festival. Every prayer meeting, we have a celebration festival. You just have to rock up. The third one that he mentions in the Bible is almsgiving. I'm telling you now, by November, I'm going to need 60,000 rand to buy Christmas hampers for 170 families because that's the number of families that rock up here consistently on a Wednesday and walk off with their meager food parcel. Their carrots, their potatoes, their mealy meal that we get to give them. It's a biblical thing to give towards that. I thank you. I thank you. For always giving. By the grace of God, we are able to steward the fish and the loaves that He brings us. But that's what it means to bring your faith 
when it comes to your treasure. Your talents, participate, people. Everybody just want to be part of worship. Stop it, man. Come and make coffee. Come and welcome. There's lots of room for you to participate. You don't know how creative you are. And when it comes to kids' ministry, mate, we teach you how to teach, isn't it? Yes. Maybe just your wonderful ability of reading a story in a dramatized way is exactly what is required. You will enthrall our kids and leave something of them, of God. Bring your talents. Participate. So for your time, show up. For your treasure, contribute. And for your talents, participate.